Okay? Welcome again. We're continuing this week with disciple. This is going to be the last study about discipleship. Now, we have been given a clear understanding of, of what a disciple is. Who can remember what a disciple is? Can you guys remember what a disciple is? Huh? What is a disciple? What we say is a disciple? Right? One who receives from Hashem, right? And we know that it comes, we have the Greek disciple, which is a pupil. And we know disciple come from the Hebrew word Talmidim. Now, a disciple is one who follow in the footstep of Moshiach, Jesus Christ. And what Jesus Christ came and he did, he actually, as we end last week, he came and satisfy what we call that, that debt. D-A-T-H and D-B-T-H. That debt of yod he wav he And that debt was necessary in order to what? Reconcile all humankind back unto the Father. Now a disciple is one who seeks the will of another, not his own will. And how do we know that? We know that because remember we, we view what Yeshua did in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 36 to 46 and where he was now wrestling where in the garden of Gethsemane and I want to parallel parallel that this evening with somebody else who wrestle with God so now in order to be a disciple a true disciple of Moshiach there must be a wrestle and a fight and we live in a culture where this word wrestle or fight has become a plague word in a society. No one want to fight. No one want to actually go to war. No one want to do that which is right for what? Identity. And it's only in a fight one's identity would be what? Known. You can't know your identity without what? Without some type of warfare, fight. And that goes to the very essence of why we ought to be disciples or Talmudim. If you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter 32 and 24. Genesis chapter 32 verses 24, verse 24, and somebody could find again Matthew 26, 36, and 46. Genesis 34. Genesis chapter 32, verse 24, and Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 to 46. Now, what I want us to remember is that in warfare or in any type of fight or in any type of wrestling one is wrestling for what identity identity is key in order to substantiate one's cause or claims or right for whatever you are fighting for what are we fighting for why were we placed here on earth to fight which we don't want to fight, which no one wants to actually fight. No one wants to fight. Everybody wants what? Peace. Peace. But then they don't know what that word shalom means. They don't know what that, that word is related in a culture as what? Peace. Or rest. This peace that the world said they need. Could you find that in any type of agreement? Could you find that in any type of negotiation, in any type of understanding? Could you find peace in those things? The answer is no. 
if you could find peace in what? Knowledge or in knowing the truth or knowing the right, then we would have a what? A better world because as you increase in knowledge, then you're supposed to be getting what? Better, wiser. That is what, what Hegel say and Plato and all these, these philosophers they say, the more you increase in knowledge, is the, more, the wiser you what? You become. Is that true? No. We see in our culture that people supposedly are getting more information, have access to the internet, have access to volumes of libraries, but are we utilizing it? No, because those is not consistent with who and what we are. Remember that we preface a disciple or someone who is a, poop, a pupil or someone who, is, who have been trained in any given institution, what they now become. They now become what? A pawn in the hands of what? Those who fed you the information. How you view scripture is how you're going to what? How you're going to behave. Now, if you view scripture from a platonic perspective, uh, um, Aristotelian perspective, a uh, Tomanian perspective, a Hegelian perspective, a Nietzschean perspective, a Nat and if you view scripture from those perspectives or those philosophy, how you think your life is going to be? It's going to be reflective of what you think. So now this fight, this war that we are fighting, that we are raging is where? Where the war is? In our mind. In our mind. In our mind. And what is the Hebrew word for mind or heart? Lev. Right? The Hebrew word for mind or heart or mind or heart, which is used interchangeably, is lev. Right? The lev. Lamid. Bet. And what Ever you actually bring towards this mind is what now you are going to what? What you're going to see and how you're going to view reality. So now this fight is on for who and what you are. Now, Christ is in a fight. Jacob is in a fight. Last week we, wrote, we, we read where Yeshua, Hamashiach, is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Somebody who, if they find that scripture, can you read it for me, please? Uh, Matthew chapter. Matthew, Matthew, read Matthew. Matthew, what? Matthew chapter 26, 36. Matthew yeah. chapter 26, verse 36. Uh, then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Continue. Yeah, go ahead. And he took with him the forty-six. and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay. okay. So now we see that Jesus Christ is where? What is he doing? He's, and he's what? He's praying to the Father. What he, what he, what he said? If this, if this is possible, let this cup be what? Passed from him. Now, this took place when? After he what? He had supper with them and he what? He told who? Who he tell? Judas, right? To go and do what? Go and do what he have to do. Now, Genesis chapter 30, 32, 24. Somebody find it? 32, 
Read from uh, read from verse twenty to twenty five. You are to also say, Look, your servant Jacob is right behind us. For he thought, I want to appease Esau with the gift that is going ahead of me. After that, I can face him, and perhaps he will forever, for, perhaps he will forgive me. So the gift was sent on ahead of him while he remained in the camp that night. During that night, Jacob got up and took his two wives his two female slaves and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of Jabok. He took them and brought them across the steam along with all his possessions. He said, it will be Israel because you have struggled with God and with man have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he answered, why do you ask my name? And he blessed him there. Jacob then named in place, named the place Peniel. Peniel? Yes. For he said, I have seen God face to face and I have been delivered. The son. What verse to reach? Um, 30. Did you skip? Verses? Did you skip? Yeah. You read from Read from 24. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not defeat him, he struck Jacob's hips as they wrestled and dislocated his hip socket. And then he said to Jacob, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. Jacob, he replied. Your name will